All right, so you remember last time from the cube restoration video that I wasn't able to get the machine started using the compact flash adapter. And today I'm gonna to go over what I did as a workaround and we're gonna be creating a net boot, a net boot server and making some images to serve these out over the network to these computers that I'm restoring. And then I don't have to worry about which operating system to pick or dealing with bum disk drives or whatever. So uh, let's get started and see how this works. So now it was time to decide what hardware to make a server out of. Uh, I, here I have a, a Mac Mini from 2005, 1.25 gigahertz PowerPC G4. So this is a first generation Mac Mini. And it's certainly not the fastest machine. So I'm not, I'm already kind of leaning towards not using it as a, uh, as a server itself. Um, but let's let's unbox what we have here while this computer boots. We might as well. All right. So the first thing is we we obviously have the installed disks. Um, 10.3 server came on two installed disks, and uh, we also have there's admin tools that you could install on non-server computers. Developer tools. I don't know some registration sheet. The getting started guide. And do you guys remember these software coupons? It was like the funniest thing to me to see that. Such a blast from, from the past. And honestly, like I have no idea what, what they would have, what you would have used those for. Like what would you have used those for? Um, I guess proof of purchase or something. I don't know, it's, it's weird. But that's, that's what you're getting uh, with the 10.3 with the server package. Whatever, so here we have 10.3 server installed on this Mac Mini, and I, I actually, I, I believe I installed this a while ago onto this computer just to see how, how it would perform. And outside of the computer's overall sluggish performance, um, that just kind of makes this computer not a candidate or not a good candidate for running NetBoot off of, um, you know, it, it runs, it's not too bad once it's started up, but, you know, I want something a little bit faster. And so, how I'm feeling about 10.3 server, I kind of feel it's mid, um, especially when I have options to other other server operating system versions. I also thought about using this uh, mid 2006 iMac. It's 17 inches, so it doesn't take up a lot of space, or it wouldn't take up a lot of space on my desk or on my countertop or, or anywhere, but, um, there's a couple of problems with it. It's This is a machine that I haven't restored yet, um, and it still has a spinning hard drive in it. So performance wouldn't be too, too great, even if, I don't know, somewhat acceptable. It booted kind of quickly here. Uh, I was going to put Snow Leopard server on there, but ultimately I decided against it just because, again, this is a computer that I haven't restored yet, and it smells like it came out of a computer lab. It just smells dusty when the computer's running, um, when you're near the computer. And so I was like, ah, I don't want this stinking up, stinking up my, uh, my, my room, my workspace at all. So I ended up, ended up scrapping this computer is a candidate. Next up, we have this 2008, early 2008 iMac. Um, this is a computer, this was actually my parents' computer, and they gave it to me when they wanted to get it out of their house. They currently have a 2017-inch iMac, or a 2017 iMac. And uh, so this machine, I already, I already know, you know what its history is. I've cleaned it up and restored it, and it has a solid-state drive in it. So um, a little bit less heat, a little bit less noise and a little more performance out of this machine, even if I'm a little bit bored by its aluminum enclosure. So let's unpack our, we might as well do an unboxing of this you know, Snow Leopard server um, package here. So we have the actual disks themselves, the admin tools, the licensing, um, support document, and a little nice little support book 
to help you go through and configure your server. A lot of stuff in here was about uh, server preferences, which was a new, I think it was a new app for 10.6 or maybe it, maybe it was 10.5. Um, pretty boring inside of here. Let's see what else we got. Oh, of course the Apple stickers. So ultimately what I ended up deciding to do is to just install 10.6 server onto this 2008 uh, 20 inch iMac here. Yeah, I think this is, I think this is going to work out well. So now we have our machine selected, we have our server OS selected, and I think we're ready to start building some images and getting our NetBoot server configured. All right, so the first machine I tried to um, make an image up was the 10.2 that we installed onto the, onto the digital audio tower previously. And you need to use something called system image utility to make it happen, but it seems like system image utility will really only work with uh, operating systems that are either the same as a server OS or the same as the server tools or um, the same or relatively recent within you know the vicinity. So what ended up happening is I wasn't able to actually make a whole lot of images using the 10.6 version of the system image utility. So I went and got my uh, mirror drive doors tower and installed 10 point server tools on it and was able to use that tower to make a couple of images. Here we're making an image of 10.4 of a PowerBook G4. I also tried to make a 10.1 image of uh, off of this iBook G3, but it didn't actually, 10.4 server tools didn't like 10.1, it just wouldn't see it, so. And then I also tried 10.6 Intel with 10.4 server tools and that didn't work either, sadly. But I was able to make a 10.6 image eventually. So here we're doing 10.2 uh, with 10.4 server tools and that, that did work. So I was able to get an image of 10.2. And I also tried 10.7 on this MacBook and it didn't, it didn't work. At this point, we've made about, I think, as many images as we can using 10.4 server admin tools. So it's time to copy these over to our actual server, and I did that using Firewire. I have this first-gen MacBook Pro here, and I was able to make a 10.6 image. It has 10.6 installed on it, and I was able to make a 10.6 image using my actual server. So that one works. 10.6 to 10.6 works. 10.4 to 10.4 works. 10.4 to 10.3 or 10.2 also works. All right, we got images uploaded and we are ready to actually try netbooting some computers now. So we're gonna start by setting up a little private network here. I use this old Airport Extreme base station and it looks like our uh, MacBook Pro or Intel MacBook Pro booted up just fine. And here we go, let's test out this uh, G4 Cube. So you can see the G4 Cube is loading its image. It looks like it's loading 10.4 right, right off of the server or the network. And I can even restart it into 10.2, I believe. Yeah, right, just like that. So like the magic of this is you can just create these images and put them up on a server and make your computer. So a lot of these Macs boot off of multiple versions and it's like, well, what version do I want to install? Now you don't have to decide what version you want to install. Um, you just have to decide what version you want to boot for that day. So, you know, it's very easy to go from 10.2 to 10.4 without needing to, you know, partition the drive or run multiple installers or, or whatever. Um, you just open up the system preferences, select what you want, and you're good to go. In the network, really, you didn't have to configure anything 
special in there like DNS or DHCP or open directory, you can do that and, and make the integration a little bit tighter and control some of this stuff using Word Group Manager, but you don't have to. Uh, the Mac will just, whatever Mac you're trying to boot, will just see in system preferences whatever images you have available. So nothing too crazy there, pretty easy process overall. Just make some images using system image utility, which is bundled as a part of server admin tools. Um, again, keep in mind that matrix of what OS is can make images of what OS is and copy them up to your server, set it up. If you, if you, if you control your network entirely, you should be able to just plug everything into your network and have it run. For me, I don't control this network. Uh, it's managed by an MSP for my apartment building complex. And so that's why I used an airport extreme base station uh, to just give myself my own little private siloed network. And I guess technically I could jump that and bridge that over to the internet too, but um, I didn't, I didn't for this, for this video. But just like that, now we're back in 10.4 land and uh, you know, you can use this for whatever you need to do. Use, you know, the vintage apps that you like to use. So that's really it. Like we just set up a netboot server. We made a bunch of images and we got, we got our max booting off of it, off of the network. And the performance of it's actually, it's pretty good um, for what it is. Even on this G4 cube that only has 10, 100 base T ethernet, if you're a Mac restore or enthusiast, I definitely recommend getting yourself a copy of some version of Mac OS X server. You can find them on eBay and, and sometimes at the, at the Goodwill websites. Uh, and go ahead and install it on, on one, a piece of hardware that you have sitting around. And if you guys like this video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I think I'm going to do more videos about Mac OS X server. It's a little bit of an underappreciated thing. So stay tuned.